Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make an infinite floor sort of like you'll see in a lot of Apple commercials with reflections and an environment. So this is going to be a slightly bigger tutorial than you expect. So I'm going to cover a lot of little different techniques and tips and tricks that will speed up your workflow when doing something like this, which for me I do repetitively many many times so i'm also going to talk about how to save your setups your little the rigs that you we can or we're going to create right now so we're going to save those rigs and put them in your content browser so you can pull them back and out every single day when you use them over and over so let me first show you a little real quickly what we're going to make and that will be this right here we're not going to make this exactly just something similar see how we have this white floor white background we do have shadows and just infinite just like it was made popular in apple commercials so without further ado let's begin and start with a special thanks to great fx for requesting me to make this tutorial and a super big special um thanks to itzy for the guy who was actually that taught me this technique in the first place so huge big thanks to itzy really appreciate that but to start what we're going to do is navigate up here to our uh, little object panel up here and what we're going to do is we're going to add a floor and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a background right here. Now, in case you don't know what a floor and background are, what the floor is, we'll start with this, is a infinite floor that infinitely goes back off into the distance. So you'll see it looks like a plane right now, but if I click render, it infinitely takes off into the distance. It just infinitely goes. And the background you'll see up here fills up the background of your render region. These gray areas here you'll see are what we're not rendering. That's because our aspect ratio is a four by three. If I go into here, change this to a 16 by nine, we'll now have a much more clean fit for our render region as you can see here. I got to this just by clicking this little sprocket up here which brought up my render settings where I clicked on output and gave me access to these controls here. I'm gonna click the X and close that. What we're going to need to do now is to make this seamless is what we're going to do is create a texture down here in the bottom left. So what we're going to do is just double click and we're going to drag this texture onto our floor. And then we're going to drag it right up here to background right up here. I can talk <laughs> right onto that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and under color, I'm going to click right here and I'm going to go all the way down and click gradient. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my gradient by clicking on it right here. And I'm going to change the type from 2D U to V. This way it's going to be going up and down. It's going to give us a much more clean look. You can do any way, left or right, and I encourage you to try around with these different gradient settings as it can give you much more different results and looks pretty cool. For now, this is what we're going to leave it at though. We're going to close this. And now what we need to do is we need to check our projection. So we're going to select this floor texture because if we render right now, I'm just going to do this real quick. Let's click render. You'll see it looks pretty bad. It looks awful actually. So we need to change the projection from being flat. So we're going to select that little texture we put on our floor. We're going to change this projection from flat to frontal. We're going to click that. Now when we click render, it is much more smooth as a gradient. You'll notice on background right here that our projection is already set to frontal. It's already going to handle that for us. It could have been set to flat but uh, it doesn't do that by default. It will do frontal, which is good because frontal is what we want. So make sure your background is set to frontal projection and your floor is set to frontal projection. You'll notice though that it still looks horrible, horrible and very bad, just not what we want at all. And here is the final little trick that pulls this all together. We're going to select our floor. We're going to the right click it, go to Cinema 4D Tags, then go all the way down till we get to compositing. We're going to select that tag there. And then we're going to check on compositing background for HDRI maps. Make sure your compositing tag is selected. If I click over here, you'll see it disappears. That means we need to make sure it's selected. Then this little menu will come up down here. And we can make sure the compositing background for HDRI maps is checked on. Now when we render, we have a seamless floor going in up to our sky up there. Notice you're going to see some white and gray up and down here. That's because that's just leaving our render region and the background is only rendered for that. That's okay though, because when we actually render this, it will come out just like we want. To have that perfect white seamless floor and background though, I'm going to open up our texture and we're going to go into here and we're just going to get rid of this little black node here and we're going to keep just the white one there. And now 
One thing I would like to mention real quick, sorry about this guys, uh, this is cutting a little bit to the end of the tutorial, I've already finished it, but I'm going to recut this back in, so you're going to see this, some things will look a little changed, but don't worry, it'll continue on. We're just going to quick um, click on our gradient, and we did have this removed, what you can do is uh, you can put that back, and what you can do is actually add a nice kind of blue kind of sky look here, which is really pretty. And uh, if you render that out, you'll see we get this kind of nice fade from white to blue for kind of like a nice little sky. It's a pretty thing I love to do. Very handy, very useful in some renders. And you can also add some turbulence right here. And uh, what I wanted to do this quick is to show you guys that some of the issues that come up. Turbulence is going to create some kind of rough noise here. I'm going to crank it real intense so you, can get it, so you can really see it and see the problem. See right here how this is all kind of blotching up from the bottom? That's because what we have is tiling on for our floor. To make sure that is, we're going to take our floor, click on the texture, and take tile and turn that off. This will fix that um, kind of overlapping problem from the bottom. So now we have this very pretty kind of apple in the sky look with some kind of pretty clouds. Just as another quick little thing I wanted to slip in, now the rest of the tutorial will continue. Sorry about that. We have, as we render, a perfectly apple looking white background with floor and sky. What I'm going to do real quick now is give us something to look at. I pre-modeled, I'm going to do Control v to paste in, a Apple logo just to continue on with this theme. I don't have the rights to this whatsoever, but for teaching this will be fine. So just realize that we can't redistribute this logo or anything whatsoever like this. This is for training purposes only. Now if we click Render, you'll see that our Apple is sitting in the scene, and uh, we have no shadows. That's because we need to make a light. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a light right here. And we're going to pull this up, and we're going to pull it over to the front. I'm going to show a little bit of my two-point lighting system that I kind of like. You could do a three-point, but for a simple scene like this, I'm just going to do a, a very easy two-point. We're going to pull the light up somewhere there. doesn't have to be anywhere special, just somewhere to the front left, anywhere you'd like. And I want to change the color to a slightly orange tint. Feel free to use the color picker right here to pick this off my screen right now if you'd like by pausing. I'll give you a few seconds to grab that. There you go. Now I'm going to press OK. Now we have some of this here. I'm just going to take Shadow and set this to Area. Now when I click Render right here, we're going to get some shadows along with the infinite floor and sky. It goes very nice right there. But what I'd like to do to lighten up the darkness of our shadows is add another light right here. Now I'm going to turn this light off because I want to show you another way of doing this real quick. If we select our original light right here, we could go to shadow and then take the density and bring it to something like say 50 percent now when we click render our shadow is definitely much more lightened for me personally i prefer another method we're going to set this back to 100 percent so we're just going to leave this the default we're going to turn our new light on and we're going to set this under general to ambient illumination so you're going to select your light the new one general ambient illumination once that is on, we're going to take our intensity and bring that down to 35%. Now when we click Render, we have that same exact effect, except now we can go to Color, tint it blue slightly, bring in some of that color. You can color pick this as well by using Choose Screen Color. I'll give you a few seconds to grab that if you'd like. Now that you have that, we're going to press OK. And now when we click Render, you can see we have a bluish tint to our shadows, which is very nice. I'm going to bring this up to actually 40%, just to make it a little bit nicer, and we'll leave the color the same. Now, by doing that, we're having a blue tint to with our shadow. The reason I'm doing this is the atmosphere in real life has actually a blue sky, as you probably noticed, and that blue light in our atmosphere, the water, the moisture that's in the air, creates a blue tint to the shadows. It's the ambient light around us. We have the sun coming in here, but that sun is getting rebounced. That light is getting rebounced and re-reflected off of many different things that tints our shadows and our environment blue. So you'll notice if you go outside on a sunny day that you can actually see some blue light and um, stuff being bounced around the environment there. So uh, by tinting your shadows just a little bit blue, don't go heavy, but just a little bit, you can really increase the realism in uh, interest of your scene there. Now that we have this done, I'm going to add something else. We're going to talk a little bit about the texture I have on this Apple I pre-built. It is extremely simple. All it is is a color channel with black in it and reflectance set to 
um, 15% with a Beckman reflection. So you just click Add, do Beckman. That's what this is right here. 100% strength, global reflection brightness at 15%, and the roughness at 25%. I can pull this down to kind of show you exactly what it looks like. There it is. Now to make this scene more interesting, what I like to do is add a environment, a reflection environment, because if we tilt our apple up at this angle and we click render, look what happens. We're reflecting the floor, but not the background. And that's because the background does not exist in your scene except for only a background object. That means it's only in the background. That means it's not actually in the scene. I can only see it. None of my objects can. So it's not rendering it, just rendering it pure black. So that's why we're getting this line here. Here's what I recommend to fix that. What you can do is take your um, background and your floor and uh, what we're going to add to them is a sky. Now we could throw this texture right on the sky and we can render it and this will make it pure white so we avoid that issue entirely and in fact we could delete the background altogether if that's what we'd like to do. For me personally though I like to go a step further and improve this and add some more interest to our environment instead of just a pure kind of gray white background just shining right on it's kind of boring let's have some more detail real life has more variations in color so to do this what we're going to do is we're going to create an hdri environment now if you haven't done this before a great way to do it is to take our sky object and make a new material and stick it on them right here just drag them up and we're going to open them up i'm going to turn off color i'm going to turn off reflectance and we're going to turn on luminance then what we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to our content browser right here. And then we have this little magnifying glass. We're going to click on him. That's the search. I'm going to type in HDRI. I've already done this search, so it already has it up for me. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to double click HDRI right here. And pick whatever HDRI out of this folder that you'd like to use. If you'd rather use your own HDRIs, they'll work just as well. Any HDRIs will work. These just happen to be the ones I'm going to be using for this tutorial. My particular favorite is HDRI 18. Love this one. Great contrast and nice bright sun in it. I'm going to grab that right out of here, pull it over, and drop it in this texture spot right here. When I release, it's going to bring it in here, and we can see we now have it in the background of our scene. You'll notice it looks very low resolution, though, and if I click Render, you can see it looks much cleaner. It is still a little rough, but um, you can get much more high-quality HDRIs if you look around at some other places. To have that nice preview, though, what we can do is select our texture, go down to Editor, and change the scaling from default, because it's descaling it in our editor, change that to No Scaling. So I went to double-click Texture, Editor, No Scaling. By doing that, we now have no scaling in our render port. Whoops, went through the floor. Now when I click render, looks exactly the same almost. You are going to have some variation, but not too bad. So now that that's done, what we can do is by clicking render, as you've probably already seen already, our apple has a lot more detail. Notice we are still getting this line right here, though. That's because our floor is infinitely going off, and then boom, it sees the environment there. This may be something that you'd like. You may want some nice kind of white floor hitting up here and then just these little highlights for me personally i for this particular render i did not want that so here's a little trick that you can do we can check on our floor click our little floor object right here and then select our compositing tag and check off scene by rays and scene by gi now when we click render it's no longer going to see the floor in the reflections and it'll only be there for the camera to see that's us and the shadows to be caught from our lights so now we're getting a much more interesting render. What we can do to further boost this is go into our texture for our apple, go to reflections, and now finally bring back our roughness to 25%. Now when I click render, we're going to be getting more reflections. To finish this off, just to kind of quickly make this a little nicer, we're going to take our sky and rotate it around this way, I'd say a little bit, just back a tad. Oops, we're going to bring that up, and we'll zoom this in, and sorry about that background noise. Bring that up about here, a little bit around, and it's just about getting this sun to catch. So what we're trying to do is get this light and that sun to kind of match up. So when we're looking from this angle, I'm kind of want something like this, when I click render, 
There we go, we're getting that nice kind of contrast right there. So now what we need to do is we need to get rid of this kind of background right here. We need to get rid of this kind of uh, little background thing there and uh, clean that up. So we need to hide it. So to hide that, what we need to do is click on our sky, right click, Cinema 4D tags, compositing just as before, except this time we're going to take scene by camera, uncheck it. Now when we click render, boom, we have our nice apple, very re good reflections, but the background is pure white. It's still catching our shadows. Very easy to work with. Now what I highly recommend doing is all the time we spent on making our floor background and sky has been a um, it's been a process. Now I it's not too bad, but I'd hate to have to do this every single day over and over. It'd be nice if we could save this. And that's why there actually is a way to do that, which is awesome. If we go to our content browser and back all the way back out to the very first area in here, we can open up presets. And what we can do <coughs> is, uh, excuse me, and then what we can do is click right here up in File on the top left and create New Preset Library. I'm going to click that. For this sake of this tutorial, I'm going to name this test, but I recommend you name it something much more descriptive. I'm going to press OK, and uh, it'll put us in that folder. I can click this little arrow to back out of it by one, and that's what you can do. You can go up a level and um, back a level by clicking these arrows to go up and out, and you can see your, your directory right here on the left, which is very nice. So here you can see we have our test folder. I'm going to double click it to go inside it. I'm going to go back to objects up here, I'm going to take our background and our floor, and I'm going to do Alt-G to put them in a null, and name this Test. Now what we can do is drag Test into the Content Browser and drop it in right here. Now that this has been put into this folder, we have it saved. So if I go to our object right here and delete our Test um, environment, you'll see it's gone. We can click Render. It is absolutely gone. And if I go to Content Browser, though, I can grab this, pull it back out into the scene, and instantly have it back. It also, may I note, note too, that it saves a texture. So if I right-click and remove Unused, we'll get rid of that extra one. So the textures will be saved, and it'll be literally, every time you pull it in, ready to go. No problem. Very handy tool, i got to say. Love being able to do this. At the same time, let's do this with our sky. We'll grab this, pull them over here put them in. We also have our sky saved as well as the HDRI and its own texture folder in HDR environment right there for us. So if I delete our sky and our test environment, we'll literally have, say I have my blank apple scene here with just some lights. I can take my sky, pull it in, take test, pull it in, hit render, ready to go. Handy dandy. And if we have some duplicated materials again, we can just right click down there and click remove unused materials. Very nice. Now that we have all that done, we have it saved. This is basically the um, setup. I would like to thank you guys very much for watching this. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't find it helpful, please leave a thumbs down. And if your comments are more complex than that, or you're having any trouble whatsoever, I really love comments in the comment section below. Please please feel free to check out um, I Can Talk. Please feel free to check out my website to see some of my work on my Instagram page or whatever you'd like to do, as well as um, my website here, where you'll have access to my real, uh, more tutorials, possible one-on-one -on -one training coming up soon. I'm working on that. Sorry it's taking so long, guys. Take a look at um, different things, galleries, courses, my Twitter feed, keep up to date on that as well as access to all of my social media outlets here below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.